Okay, hang on. Okay, I've got a new microphone boom arm, guys. I need to mention this. The reason why I've got a new microphone boom arm is for two reasons. The first reason is so as I can do this. So I've got all the space in the world to be able to get on and do some work without a big microphone being in the way. And I haven't got to keep disconnecting it, but I can also do this. And then I can Zwift ride. And then I can Zwift ride using the microphone and it will give me silky smooth Zwift audio. So, so that's the first point of business for this video. But the second point is, I've had a haircut. I've had a haircut. <laughs> I've finally cut my hair, as everyone keeps reminding me. Um, yeah, so there you go, got that out of the way. Nothing more to be said. So this race, this video that I'm making today is one of my normal, I say it's one of my normal, it's one of my usual Zwift race review videos that I upload to my Patreon page. I try and get a race review up onto my Patreon page at least once a week for those that support me on Patreon. However, this race review video is a race recon review video. And what I mean by that is this weekend, there is a race on the 2nd of November, Saturday the 2nd at 8pm that I'm signed up to. The race is called, let me show you, the Podcast of Battle, as you can see there. And the course is the Ocean Lava Seaside Loop. Is it Seaside? No. Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop. So yeah, eight o'clock this Saturday. Now, if you're watching this before the 2nd of November and you're watching it this week, you're more than welcome to come and sign up and join and race with me or race against me, whatever you want to do. I've got to be honest, I'm not going to be much of a, of competition. However, the whole point of the race, I have made a video about this. So if you're not 100% sure, go and watch my video I uploaded a few weeks ago called Zwift Announcement, Podcast a Battle. And the whole point is it's a charity race and it's first across the line, but it's not first across the line for anyone. It's first across the line for Nathan, Nathan Craig, my friend, and Holly Bergen, also my friend. Two people that have both been on my podcast. Yeah, and it's first person to cross the line. The whole point of both teams is to help them get across the line. So be there for moral support, which is what my aim is, moral support. Or if you're a good cat seer or above Zwift and you can keep up with them, especially up the climbs, because I will say, having now raced this course, um, it is a quite a, um, how can I put it without putting people off? It's quite hilly <laughs> and it's tough. So yeah, this course is going to be a, a good one for anyone that wants to try and help Nathan draft him across the line. That's the whole point. And when, and when I say Nathan, you can also join Team Holly if you want to race again. I'm on Team Nathan, so if you want to race against me, join Team Holly. She's a really good Zwifter, by the way, and I spent a long time last week talking to her in depth about her Zwifting prowess. So if you haven't done so already, sign up to my Ryan Condon unscripted podcast channel. I'll leave the link in the description. Nathan's already on there if you want to listen to us talk chat about Zwift. So I've asked Nathan to join me for this race recon review video, and that's what we've done. So this, the whole point of this is me talking through this attempt to complete the ocean lava cliffside loop. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Oh, hang on, let me get on the bike. So I'm just gonna quickly interject and add, I was late getting onto this race. We were supposed to be on this call chatting, which we didn't end up actually doing. So we're racing this completely, um, you know, without talking to each other. But I knew Nathan wouldn't drop me. This is a um, recon race for Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop, because I've got the podcast of battle in a few days this weekend. So I literally got on with like 20 seconds uh, to spare. Record four, okay, here we go. I forgot to connect up my Zwift controller, so I had no steering. Wrong gear. And I also forgot to connect my heart rate monitor. I literally got on, guys, with 20 seconds to spare. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I do this to myself. So you're going to have to forgive me. All I can do is apologise. As we get off the line, we start the race. And I didn't realise this, but all categories within this race all start at the same time. So I'm not aware until... You know, I'm trying to drop. I'm thinking this is a really fast start. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking, my God, normally 400 plus watts gets me to the front and I have to rein it in. I'm supposed to be doing this with Nathan. So my gears, if you're wondering why they sound so funny or they sound like I'm one minute spinning, one minute not, I've changed them to hill climbing gears on my watt bike app. So I've changed them on the watt bike because this has got one big old climb, smack bang in the middle. I need to concentrate. 
So what it is that I'm trying to explain here is I've connected my bike to my app on my phone and I've changed my gear in. I don't really understand how it works, but I am reliably informed that there are several different types of gear in that you can have set up on your outdoor bike in real life. And one of those is to help you with hill climbing. Now what it's done is it's given me much more of a range low end. So I'm able to um, pretty much spin much more uh, at a lower gearing or high gearing however you describe it i'm not really explaining it very well but basically the setup is much better for hill climbing which i thought would be good for me so at this point in the race obviously we've got the first climb the small climb small hill um, and all i'm doing is trying my best just to stay <laughs> at the front of this group i mean it's mental i mean there are bees up here that i'm trying to keep up with okay nathan's dropped me already i'm in the wrong gears now nathan is ahead of me at this point i should say nathan came off the start line like a bat out of hell i don't know what he was attempting here <laughs> um i haven't asked him and uh, the whole point of this race was to kind of do do it as a recce a bit of a recon oh, i'm done Holly, if you're watching this video, this is probably a bit of an eye-opener. You're going to want to come off this start line like a bat out of hell because Nathan wasn't messing about. He's dropped me. <sighs> now, I'm already dying to death. As I mentioned already, I forgot to connect my heart rate monitor, so I don't have my heart rate, but I can tell you now it's in the 170s, probably even 180s. I've come off this start line. I'm now averaging for the first, how far? For the first 1.6 kilometers, I'm now averaging 282 watts. And I've held in excess of 280 watts now for nearly three minutes. And I realized that as these riders come past me now, what I need to be doing is sticking with them in the draft. Draft is the key to this. Get into the beginning of the climbs ahead of as many people as possible is going to give me a fighting chance to kind of retain it. Now, this course that we're doing here me and nathan this is just one loop this is one lap of the ocean lava cliffside loop it's just one lap of it when we do it this saturday at eight o'clock it's going to be two laps so we're going to be doing it twice so once i've completed this i've got to go again now that's obviously painful because the climbing in this for me is brutal you know if you're a, if you're a lighter swifter you're going to love this however there is one advantage and that is i've got quite a lot of endurance So I'm hoping that as people start dying a death, I'm going to be able to, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do, if I'm honest, I'm just trying to think positively. I've caught Nathan. <laughs> Burning some matches that I literally should save for the climb. Thank you for that, Nathan. I've caught Nathan. <sighs> Now, I will say that this small group here that has formed, I did get quite a lot of messages when I joined late. I didn't reply. Apologies, guys, those of you that were in the pen messaging. I saw them. I just wasn't <laughs> I wasn't in the position to be able to reply. I literally was struggling to connect things, and I was really late, so my apologies. But I think some of these riders were hanging around because they just wanted to, I don't know, ride with us, um, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm with Nathan now. Nathan has got the big um, grey afro. Now I'm going to say not a lot happens between the last climb, which I've got over now, and we're coming down the other side, and the next start of the next big climb. Now when I say big climb, these aren't big climbs. For anyone that Zwifts will know, Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop doesn't have huge climbs on it. Um, but it does have the start of the Epic Com. So this is a tough course for anyone that you know weighs a bit or anyone who's out of practice like me who's getting back into it because it's winter. This is brutal. This is a tough gig. So when you come into this race, expect some pain. I've also just realized I forgot to connect my heart rate monitor. It's dangling there. Oh, I was late getting ready for this ride. My steaming's not connected. Oh my God. What a disgrace. <sighs> um, but don't worry, if you get dropped, you've got me there. Um, we'll be dropped together, guys, because, you know, Nathan is holding back 
to stick with me. Yeah, he's decided to drop back after the punchy start, which I don't know what that was about. I'm sure if I did a recon with Holly, she wouldn't have dropped me on the start line. But I am looking forward to the race. It's going to be a good one. Hopefully there's going to be over 100 people in it, which is going to be awesome. Okay. The hill's coming up, which is where I'm done. <sighs> I've averaged 247 watts just to stay here. <clears throat> okay. So this is the start of the windy corkscrew climb. I always really struggle on this one. It's not hugely steep. However, it does go on for a little bit longer than I feel comfortable with, but it's also on gravel. Anyway, yeah, I really struggle. I've, I've done quite a few races on this course recently, and I've been dropped here every single time. And as you can see, Nathan's just gone ahead of me there with his feather. I'm trying my best to keep up, but it's a tough gig. I'm dying to death. I am. Oh my god, this is. I've got to do this all again twice. Two loops, two laps. Okay, right. So Nathan's now gone ahead. So I'm thinking, I'm not sure again whether he's dropped me, whether I need to put some effort in to try and catch up with him. Um, I'm really trying not to give up. There's a lot more red in this race than there normally would be in one of my races. Ah! So I kind of just maintain 250, 270 watts up this climb and then there's a sharp right turn and we go downhill before we then hit the bottom of the start of the incline up to the Epic Com. It's not the Epic Com, but it's the start of it, I think. So these small climbs that we've just done, that we've done as part of this recon, they're nothing compared to the one that's coming. But this is where we now go downhill. Now, obviously, weighing 92 kg, this is where I'm able to gain some ground on those ahead of me. Not a lot because I'm done. However, if I do put a punch in, then I am able to close some gaps, which is what I do <laughs> to try and... There's Nathan. I'm passing Nathan now. <laughs> I thought, yeah, well, you've dropped me. I'm going to drop you. <laughs> we're supposed to do a friendly recon where we're helping each other. And I'm not sure what help I can be to Nathan because he's a stronger rider. But I thought, see you later. And I decided to make him have to work to catch up with me for a change because we're downhill. So we're now over 11 minutes into this and I'm averaging 250 watts. I'm just going to check Zwift Power actually because I think... Yeah, so on Zwift Power, my 20 minute average was 2.7 watts per kg which I'll take all day long. Let me just compare that to, yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, so that's my best ever 20 minute watt per kg average, 2.7 watts per kg. That's the highest I've achieved and I've equaled, let me just confirm, I have just equaled my second best overall watts average across the entire ride. So I went for it, Nathan, if you're watching this, this was my attempt at going full gas. Okay, so we're now coming into the start of the big climb on this course. Yeah, this is where anyone like me is going to get annihilated. I'm just warning you now, guys. This is where you're going to have to go. You save your matches for this bit. Forget about your sprint finish. Unless you're an out-and-out -out Zwifter, who knows what they're doing. My advice, save everything you've got. Try and stick with a pack to draft and save everything you've got for this part of the course. This is where you're going to need every single match. This is where you're going to need all of your Duracell batteries. So yeah, tough gig. And I'm going for it. I'm just trying to use everything I've got here. But they're just sailing away. So I'm just going to quickly say that my the change of gears I've now done, where I've changed them from the racing gears that were set previously to the climbing gears that give me a larger range. It basically means that every gear from 1 to 20 allows me to spin a lot more. They don't generate as high well they don't give me as high a resistance is what i'm trying to say and in gears 21 and 22 significantly jump up in resistance so i pretty much get gears 1 to 20 which you know unless i'm climbing a 
20% gradient. Unless I'm doing the radio tower, I'm probably not going to use gears 1 to 10 or even 1 to 15. And then when I'm on the flats, I'm only ever using gears 20, 21 and 22. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep using these gears because I think they're going to help me in climbs. I think it's going to make a difference, especially when I do big efforts up out to Zwift or Ventop. The only challenge I've got is the jump from gear 21 to 22 is massive which is why my RPM, as you can see, where I've gone from gear 20 to 21, and then I've jumped from 21 to 22, you would think wouldn't be a huge difference, but it is. So my RPM dropped from like the 70s or 80s all the way down to 50, which was a mistake and isn't great for the leg muscles. However, sometimes I prefer it when I'm standing out in the saddle. I don't know why. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Every day is a school day. So we're just getting to the top of the climb. Now I will say, for anyone watching this video, ahead of the race this Saturday, if you are deciding to join us, is the map overlay. So the map that's showing you here is showing you, I think, the climb up the Epic Comp. We, we're not racing it on this course, you'll be pleased to know. So even though the map gradient is showing you that this climb carries on a lot longer than it does, it goes on a bit further from what you can see on screen now, but I'm talking about the different coloured gradient markers that you've got on screen so ignore them psychologically i'm thinking to myself i've got to climb that and i'm done so any energy that you might have had to push a bit harder now you're kind of conserving for the effort you know is coming up that blue bit is where you turn left and then you start descending over the rollers and then you go downhill one of the reasons i'm doing this course because if i had done this fresh out the box when i first did this i did this course a few weeks ago and when i first saw this this gradient marker come up on screen at this point i was beside myself because I was expecting to have to carry on this climb in all that red. So you can give it your maximum effort here and you can keep going, you can keep pushing knowing that you've got the rollers to come and then once you've done the rollers it's downhill and you're laughing. So now that we've turned left instead of right this is where you can get some recovery in but my advice to you based on my efforts that I've done here keep pushing. Keep pushing at these points. Get in the draft where you can. I've just caught Nathan now. I say I've caught Nathan. He's waited for me, which was very kind of him, having left me on the climb. These are the rollers I'm talking about. They go up and down, undulating, so you can put some effort in here. Now, if you're a heavier rider like me, this is where you can claw some time back because if you power into the rollers, as you go up, you get a slingshot effect over the top and down the other side. Not a lot happens over these rollers. I just try my best to keep up with Nathan and he now shoots off because he knows there's a descent here and as we start going over the bridge back down towards the finish line we've only got 6k left to go so i put a bit of a dig in now at this point because what i want to do is i've got a rider just ahead of me i want to get into their draft and then i can use them to go downhill i know that i'm about to super tuck because it's really steep here <sighs> super tuck and I know that if I can speed out the bottom of this descent, then I can latch back onto Nathan and his group, which are just ahead of me. So I'm going to skip forward here because there's not a lot that happens other than that we just cycle along as a small group. However, the other guys start chatting about sprinting for a sprint finish. Yeah, I haven't got a sprint finish in me. I've just spent the last however far, 13k, trying to hold my highest ever watts per kg average for 20 minutes. And as you can tell by the fact that I've mentioned it several times, I'm really proud of that. So as we then reach the last small bump, the last small incline before the finish line, the finish line is only... 1.4 kilometers away one of the riders decide to push off nathan goes for it to try and keep up with them so i've got no option and uh, i should have just kept going because they've got a punchy sprint they've got like 11 watts per kg sprints which you'll see in a sec i should have just gone long and just made them burn matches and just destroyed their sprint i'm not beating them but i could have i could have ruined their sprints <laughs> which is quite a cynical way of racing the only thing i've got in my arsenal is to go long and i don't know why i don't do it more here we go right so how we got 0.4 kilometers i just thought let's go for it <laughs> Luckily for me, because I didn't have steering, the AI steering moved me out the way. So it means they have to move over. <laughs> 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 I 
and then they come through doing ridiculous, ridiculous watts per kg. See you later, guys. I'm done. I've, I'm completely destroyed. I would say it's been a long time since I felt this annihilated in a race, but it's really not. I feel this annihilated in every... I, I, I give 110% in every race. <laughs> So even though it says there that I finished in 21st, that's 21st out of 70, which that's pretty good odds. And that's 21 out of the A, Bs, Cs and Ds. So again, I'll take that. And when I check on Zwift Power, I finished in 7th in the C Cats. I mean, there were 13 C Cats. So 7th, happy with that. I'll take that all day long at the moment. That was a tough race, man. And then I'm going to have to do that loop. Again, it's a two lap course. I'm gonna go and lie on the shower floor. I hope to see you in the race. So for those of you that leave comments on my videos to say when's the next Ryan Epic race, well, this isn't a Ryan Epic race because it's a Nathan and Holly Epic race. But if you're looking to ride with me, if you wanna race, if you wanna join a group of people having fun and it doesn't matter about the individual wins, it's about the team win, then um, this is a race for you. Because even if you do end up getting dropped on the climbs like me, then we, we can still ride together. It will still be fun. So sign up, guys, this Saturday at 8 o'clock.